Okay. We've asked our Cairo Shen, who is a member of the planning committee for this event, to do a reflection and wrap up. And uh, Kairos is the city of Boston's chief planner, started out the BRA, and then the mayor promoted him to be our chief planner. And he's done an extraordinary job. And here we have. Um, thank you. Is it okay if I stand up? Stay up? Um, uh, first of all, thank you, Vivian, for inviting me and uh, to be part of the celebration of this uh, 25th anniversary. Um, and I hope I don't crash the party in a way. Um, I think it was a lot of content that was delivered in the last, uh, last evening and this morning. And um, you know, I think many of you uh, who sat through last night um, <coughs> probably were struck in the same way that I was by Alex McLean's photographs. Uh, and and you know, immediately you go, oh my goodness, where are we? What's changed? And you keep looking at the photographs and I found myself actually kind of looking at projects that uh, when I arrived in the city almost about 25 years ago uh, and trying to mark the time. Um, and I think, you know, the, there are a few thoughts that came to mind, which was that how, how powerful the changes have been in, as Doug Floyd said, in just one generation. Um, and, you know, I, I was trying to think of, well, and then when you think, and when you heard also um, Ken Greenberg's uh, recounting of an urbanist uh, life cycle through his relationship between, you know, growing up in the city and then being an advocate for the city uh, and the ecology of the city, not just of the ecology of the larger environment, what that life cycle is like. <coughs> I'm sure we'll, we'll learn a lot more from Ken from, for many more years to come. I started to think, well, if you started to think about the, the, the conversations that we've been having the last, uh, last night and this morning, I wanted to sort of maybe frame them in terms of questions. So in the context of last night, those images and, and Ken, I, stood, I, I kept asking myself, what were we thinking? I mean, I wasn't, I was thinking then, but I wasn't in a, in a let's say, a, I wasn't influencing decisions at that time. But there were people who were all like us, who were intelligent, um, advocates for our own cause, and look at the mistakes we made. I mean, it was unbelievable, right? I mean, you look at those aerial photographs over our city that uh, started with, a, well, urban renewal, the highway, and then this, the, the, the erosion of the city around the highway, um, something that I think um, Brent showed that in, if, if that if we didn't that the fact that they didn't take that decision that it affected where they are today. So you know when you think about that as a question, well, what were we thinking? Then you I start to ask the questions about the values that we had, and in particular related to the harbor, the question about how did we value that resource? Um, you know, in the photographs, Alex's photographs, they seem relatively unchanged. The harbor seemed pretty actually very resilient right, to all the crap that we were doing to it. Um, and we were exploiting it in a way that I think was uh, economically um, the, the way that the, econ the economy allowed us and actually in some ways dictated us to, to exploit the, the harbor, as well as the same way that we actually dealt with the city. Uh, and I come out of also thinking that in spite of our stupidity, that the city and the harbor were incredibly resilient to our stupid ideas. Um, now, the counterpoint to that, I, I'm thinking also, is that I have a lot of um, admiration for the boldness of those ideas. The fact that we were audacious enough to dump all our crap into the harbor, rip apart our city to renew it in what we thought were great ideas, showed that we didn't lack in our boldness. And sometimes when I think of what the work that we do, um, both you as advocates, as NGO, and we in government, that we lack that boldness. And I worry that without that same kind of boldness, that, um, that we won't be able to solve the problems that, that we're confronted with. Um, maybe, um, to avoid being as stupid as we were, 
that we need to take a different attitude, which is that you need to be bold, but you also need to be uh, open-minded about, and, and because I think that the single-mindedness of which we approach urban renewal and many kind of planning projects and development projects, it's the single-mindedness that's the problem, not the boldness. So that was sort of what I got out of last night. Um, this morning, of course, we had Brent and Michael, and it was really, I think, you know, aside from feeling sorry for ourselves, uh, that uh, we perhaps have not achieved as much as Brent and other, you know, several generations of extremely talented planners and um, have achieved it in, in, um, in Vancouver and also our, our, our colleagues and, and uh, sometimes rivals in New York. Um, we often sort of, I think we have this sort of com uh, complex of wanting to compare ourselves. Um, and I'd like to think that we're doing okay. Um, I'd like to think that uh, that more important out of that conversation was really reflecting um, how we benchmark ourselves, how do we compare ourselves to these cities. And really, the, the, uh, the point that I took away from that was, well, what moment are we at right now in Boston? And what do we learn from being an outsider looking at these other cities? And Fred, I think, I know you're staying for the next few days, and um, one of the things that you could help us do is to help us understand the moment that we're at. Because I think before we can think about what's next, Right. We need to know where we are now. And the question that I, I would say, are we in a, well, how comfortable are we? I mean, I, 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 Roger and, and Allison and others that were talking about those businesses, in some ways, we've gone to the place where we have a very comfortable relationship with the harbor. It's cleaner, it's women, we can go out to the islands. And it seems like most of it, at least the way that we think about it, is that it, it's, it's good. It's, it's great, we need to reconnect to it, um, we reclaim the use of, uh, and, and our activities on it. But I'm worried a little bit that we get too comfortable. Um, and, and I think some discomfort there is important for us to think about, again, what moment we are at, and what our responsibility is for this moment. And of course, you know, the question about what's next is, well, what can we make sure that we don't miss now? that we need to start, you know, 25 years ago, there was a lawsuit. It was clear what we had to do. 25 years ago, you know, we had a city that was really in decay. It was clear that we need to get private development and private investment, uh, and the government's role was to do that. And, and I begin to think, well, compared to these other cities, um, you know, what, where are we? Are we in an evolutionary moment? Are we in a, a revolutionary moment? I don't know, uh, and, and that's not perhaps something you want to hear from the chief planner. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, that makes me um, that you you have more confidence in me doing my job because it's, it, you should be fearful if I tell you I know what we should be doing because I think uh, there were some mistakes that were made because people were too sure. So uh, the last uh, two panels, uh, this last panel in particular, I thought was a really interesting way of sort of thinking about uh, what's next, expanding our sort of general territory of what we think it relates to the harbor. Um, uh, and, and I started to think, well, clearly, many people mentioned this about climate change. Clearly, that's what's next. Part of the problem is that it's, we haven't yet defined for ourselves what climate change really is. There's a lot of science behind it. We had a conference in uh, November of last year right in this room. Um, and when I agreed to close that, I told myself I'd never do it again. But somehow, <laughs> here I am standing here trying to do the same thing. Um, which is to climate change. And, and the question is, for me, climate change, is that we haven't yet gotten our arms around it. We have obviously started to really engage in this issue about mitigation. Um, we have yet started, or we're just beginning to think about adaptation, which is to think about, well, uh, really recognizing that we're not going to be able to fight this. In, in, in fight, meaning that we can't alter the course of the climate change already, so that sea level rise is a reality. And the question is, well, what do we do about it? 
And it seems to me a larger kind of issue about really understanding the relationship between nature and the man-made, which I think of actually going back again to um, Alex's photographs, is this constant struggle of what we build and what nature and how we, how our forms, our urban forms, our city, and the form of nature interact with each other. And my, you know, the events of this last year, in particular in the tsunami and, and many kind of catastrophic weather events, have at least taught me that, that um, I think nature's gonna win. So the way that we build cities and the way that we approach you know, our natural resource, that we have to have that kind of humility. Um, and then the question is, you know, what is our advocacy in that context? Um, I, I, I know that as we tackle climate change and the new challenges ahead of us, but one thing I think, there are two things that I think that come to mind. One is that I think our image and conception of our city and our harbor and our natural environment will not be the same. I think, you know, I carry in my mind, and when I go to other cities, sometimes when I go to, the last time I went to Vancouver, I, I'm always kind of in the, sale, the sales mode, right? deliver what I think is the image of Boston, and what we have that other people can learn from us. The same way I think that uh, Brent and Michael did a very good job of today for their cities. But, that, but I do know for one thing, is that one thing for sure is that the image and our conception of, of our city has to change it. We have to be open to change. Uh, the second is that whatever we do, we have to have, um, there shouldn't be one outcome. Right? I mean, in, in, when we look back again, how the city has transformed um, in the last 25 years, it, you know, many of you uh, were involved directly in either, you know, permitting it, building it, and, you know, commenting and uh, commenting on it. I don't think there was a preordained outcome in any of them. And but when you look back, it all seems so natural in a way. Right? It sort of evolved. And I, I, I think. Um, it's not that big. there are many untaken uh, paths that if we look back, the city could have been much worse. Maybe it could have been better, hopefully not much better, because then we would be really regretful here. Um, but we need to actually approach this new challenge of climate change with multiple outcomes. And I, I liked very much uh, the last, you know, the Oyster Project and so on, because it actually raised questions about the individual uh, and the sort of, um, structure through which we, we uh, impact our city and change. Uh, last night, I think Doug Foy, or I can't remember who it was Doug, that talked specifically about sort of the bottom, no, actually what Ken talked about bottom up um, as opposed to top down. And I think of the sort of role in particular uh, when we relate to both the private and public sectors role in this. So you can't rely on the traditional kind of governance that the public sector provides, you know, even though they can be very powerful, such as regulations and the way that we conduct business. Um, we need to think more about how we now, you know, politics has changed completely. Uh, it's much more bottom-up, at least it seems like many of the successful campaigns tend to be. Um, and there is this notion of the power of the many as opposed to the power of the one. Um, and then, of course, one of the things that we will have to come back, and I think, um, <coughs> Uh, uh, Mr. Spalding in particular talked about really beginning for us to think more about the alignments of various factors, about aligning uh, our economy and the environment, uh, and aligning the kinds of um, uh, various resources that we have in order to take on this challenge. And then of course, last but not least, this notion that the traditional boundaries that we have between cities, Winthrop, Boston, Cambridge, um, Quincy, are not really useful for solving the kinds of uh, problem at the order of magnitude that we, we're about to really begin to understand. Um, so, I, I, you know, certainly this is not um, intended as a kind of complete um, you know, uh, summation of many of the things we've discussed, but, but so I, I just want to repeat the kind of three big questions that I leave. First, what are we thinking? What were we thinking? Second, what moment are we at? And then finally, in that context, what's next? And I would say that the way we should think about what's next is that 25 years from now, I don't want to be 
saying, what were we thinking then? Um, and, and the question is, you know, ultimately the attitude that we take to um, you know, face the future. So hopefully that's you know, um, somewhat relevant. And, and again, thank you and again, congratulations to all of you and, um, uh, that have been part of this incredible transformation of the last 25 years and I, I hope that we can do as well uh, for the next 25 years. and Finn Boston Harper what next. I just want to thank our presenters both last evening and also today. Fabulous presentations. As I said last night, all of them volunteered their time. So ones in our city as well as our visitors from out of town, um, everyone volunteered and is not being paid for what they did. And I think it's extraordinary in terms of the civic engagement by so many people. So I thank our, our panelists and our speakers. So people, Kairos was on it, we had other representatives from the Boston Redevelopment Authority, the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority, MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning uh, Council, the uh, Urban Harbors Institute at UMass Boston, we had a number of citizens, uh, Ivy St. John from Charlestown, Robert Culver, uh, a number of people. So we're very grateful for the suggestions and the leadership that came from the Planning Committee. And finally, I want to thank the Judge A. David Mazzoni Fund who helped to underwrite this event and made it possible for us to provide you with good with refreshments and also um, to help uh, subsidize some of the costs for doing this. So they, in fact, paid for all that, not only part of the cost, but all of the cost. And then our partners at the Boston Harbor Hotel, which uh, hosted the post session on Saturday, and the Seaport Hotel for putting up our out-of-town guests. So thank you to all of them. We look forward to seeing you at some future point. Please send us any comments that you have that you want to think about it and send to us so we can capture it in the document that we would share with all of you. And uh, please take the lunch as well. Thank you so much.